Hi everyone, welcome to On the Other Hand. I'm Ariane Zercher, and today I'm going to be talking about a whole bunch of different things. Mostly, I have a quiet moment, and so I thought I'd just turn on the camera and start talking to all of you, because I don't have a lot of quiet moments. I have to grab them when I can. So if you haven't done so already, give me a thumbs up. It always helps with the YouTube algorithms, and I love hearing from you. Leave me comments in the comments section. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. I'm going to turn you around and I'm going to start stitching. Grab something to stitch with and join me. I'm doing a little, um, this is a technique that I really enjoy doing, which is to take a thread and it doesn't matter really what the thread is. Although if you're not sure what to use, use a color thread that's going to be the same as your background or similar to the thread that you're going to use to cover it with. And what I mean by that is you start with a little chain stitch. Now I'm using a painter's soft cotton. It's a three weight. It's a pretty heavy weight, an 18 chenille. And I'm doing a little circle-ish shape. You, the beauty of this technique is that you can make all kinds of different shapes, uh, organic looking shapes that are um, different. And I'm not showing the, this whole thing on purpose um, because this is actually a project that I'm in the middle of with my improvisational stitching workshop. And so I don't want to show all of you what I'm working on before I've had a chance to show uh, the people who are taking the class. But I did want to show this technique because it's one that I like to use. It's really fun. It's incredibly versatile because as I said, you can make really any shape you want. And it's just a great little way to add some additional interest to something that you might be working on. So what I do is I do freestyle. I don't, if you wanted, you, if you had a specific shape in mind, you certainly could um, draw a chalk pencil, you know, a shape of something with, with a piece of, with some chalk, with a chalk pencil. I don't, I, I tend to just sort of wing it. Um, I like using the uh, hand dye striations as kind of a, so I'm a way of putting a boundary around it. So I'm not going to go way off over here. I'm just going to keep this uh, kind of an oval more like this, maybe. Um, and then I'm going to take a different thread and I've already actually pulled the thread. This, by the way, is this. It's Painter's Soft Cotton in Agave. Uh, agave. And this one is the same, but it's the three weight. Uh, it's just got a different, it's more like a pearl cotton. It's got a twist to it, whereas this is more like plied almost. Um, and it's matte. The other one has a little bit of shine to it. So I don't really worry about the length of my stitch or any of that. I'm just doing a chain stitch around and I do want to meet up with my beginning chain. So that's the only thing I'm really being at all aware of is where I began. But even that, doesn't really matter too much because I'm going to cover this whole thing. So there's my little one. Here I have another one. And then I'm going to show you what I do. Okay. So I'm going to now thread up another 18 chenille. This one, which I think I already did, didn't I? Yes. 
I didn't thread it up on a chenille. I did it on a Milner's. That's okay. I'm just going to leave it on a Milner's. All right. So I come up anywhere in this circle. Does it has it absolutely does not matter where. And I'm going to wrap this chain in this other thread. Now, it can be a totally different color. What I do try to do is I want this thread to be somewhat inconspicuous so that if there are gaps, it's not going to matter. I'm not going to, it doesn't, it won't show. So, for instance, if I had a bright engine red, obviously any little bit would show and I don't want that. So I want it to be a neutral or the same color as the background or the same color as the thread that I'm now covering it with or even the same thread. Okay, so I don't know what all of you did this morning, but I spent the morning making appointments for various things like getting my teeth cleaned because I have not had my teeth cleaned in over a year. So I did that and then I had to call um, to get an MRI because I'm getting I have these headaches that are recurring and they wake me up at night. And so they want to rule out any issues. I'm sure I'm fine, but you never know. And so I'm going to be a responsible adult and schedule an MRI. And I had to schedule blood work and, you know, all that. And the other thing I did... <laughs> Now that I'm fully vaccinated, I'm going to schedule all this stuff. The other thing I did was I have this seven minute workout app and I got it when the pandemic hit because I'm thinking, okay, well, I'm not, the gym's closed. I, I don't have any, you know, I'm, it, we were in total lockdown. So I got this seven minute app and I used it exactly zero times. I, I just never used it. It's like I got the app. I installed it on my phone. I looked at it. I told myself, well, who could, who could, e e e there's no way I'm going to be able to justify not doing seven minutes of an exercise routine. So this will be an easy way to just do something, right? Accepting that I did find ways to justify not doing it because I didn't do it. Mostly I just forgot all about it. I literally, I forgot all about it. So the other day I thought, you know, I've got this seven minute app and I really should, I should, I should use it. I mean, I should, I should use it. So I did, and it was actually kind of a vigorous workout with lots of, you know, squats and crunches and all that. And I was definitely out of breath and I was very happy when it was over. And then the next day I was really sore, seven minutes, and I was so sore. And then the next day I was even sore. And I thought, wow, I am really out of shape. I've got to do this more. That was 10 days ago. Have I done it since? Nope. Not once. And I'm telling you all this because I'm hoping that maybe I will be prompted and feel so ridiculous having said this that um that I'll I'll do it but you never know so you can see how this is looking right it's a way of really giving yourself some height on from the fabric it kind of adds a whole nother dimension to it and it's a way of creating shapes, little organic shapes. So much like my exercise app, I, um, I had very little awareness that Easter was last weekend. And it wasn't until I think Thursday or maybe Friday even that I realized Easter was that weekend. And not that we do much, but we, I usually make something for Easter dinner and, you know, um, and so I did, I made a key lime pie and in the process of opening a can, I 
cut my finger, I think. I'm not really sure. Anyway, it was bleeding. And then I made a leg of lamb. And we had a lovely little dinner, which was nice. Kind of welcoming in spring dinner. One of the things I wanted to mention as I'm doing this, I don't go down into the fabric every time. I actually can scoot my thread um, just under the chain stitch and then every now and then go into the fabric because this is such a thick thread, it does make it a little challenging to pull and I do need my pliers to do so. Now what I like to do is I like to do a little cluster of them, of these little roundy looking organic shapes. So like right here, I'm just going under the chain stitch itself. I'm not even piercing the fabric. And then I'll pierce the fabric here. What's cool about this is that you can really change the look and the shape by using different threads. So if I use a much finer uh, um, weight thread, so an eight weight, I'm not gonna have it, do you see how it's really a roll here? But if I use a finer weight and this same thread to wrap it, I'm gonna get a very different looking circle than this so you can change it up quite a bit by just using a different thread for the chain and then if you want you know an elongated circular shape or you want something that's actually not circular at all but it's kind of a very organic looking enclosed shape of some kind or let's say you decide you don't want it enclosed at all you just want a line of some kind well you can do that too it's the same idea so let's say i wanted to just emphasize um the striations here i could do a little a chain in a in an eight weight that goes around this lighter shape and then encase that whole thing or I could go up like this and then around here and encase all of that. It, it just gives you another option, another way to, to create um, interest using what is essentially a straight stitch, a satin stitch. The other thing that you can do is you can do this with a variegated, which is really pretty because there's so much thread that gets used. It really shows off the variegation and all the different colors. Um, another thing that you can do is use a different uh, weight thread for the wrapping and that of course is going to change it as well. So there's just an awful lot you can do with this idea. And as I said, I love making a little cluster of these. They almost look like little organisms under a microscope.
So there's that. And now I'm going to wrap this one and I'm going to make one more, a smaller circle over here. All right. So here are my circles, my three circles. And now I'm going to do a couple of bouillon circles that um, in the same thread that's going to kind of mimic what I've already done. I usually do about 12, uh, 20 wraps for these. This is a thicker thread, so I don't know how that's going to look, but Kind of see. Yeah, that looks good. And I'll do hmm, maybe three or five of like a cluster of them. So I go back down where I came up and then I take my needle above so right kind of there and I wrap it around to anchor that down and to keep that shape the way I want it so it's like that and I'll do just a few of them maybe you know, in here, I might do one over here, I might do one over here, kind of thing. But <clears throat> the point is, I'm going to have sort of a constellation of them around here in this area. Okay, so you can see I've done a whole bunch of these. Um, so these are the ones with the chain stitch underneath, and these are just the bouillon circles. And I'll put that video in the upper right corner. So you can see, and these are the bouillon circles as well. But it, it's nice when, it, when you do little clusters of them interspersed with the ones with the chain stitch. And I just think the chain stitch, um, covered chain stitch is just a really nice uh, little thing to know how to do. And you can adapt it and change the shape into whatever you like. So I hope this was helpful. And until next time, let's keep stitching together. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. Love to hear from you in the comments. So talk to me. Until next time, let's keep stitching together.